This right here is the bread and butter of the entire system, and I guarantee that I wouldn't have passed the exam if I didn't have this. What's up everybody? This is Brandon Hill, and welcome back to my channel where we share content to help young professionals develop personally, professionally, and financially. If you're here, then I assume that you're curious about how you could pass the CFA level one exam. Well, today I'm gonna teach you how I did it. At the time that I'm filming this video, the past three exams have had the lowest pass rates ever recorded. I'm making this video because I believe that my study system and philosophy are unique to what's currently out there. I took level one in August of 2021, which had a 26% pass rate. Thankfully, I passed. And on top of that, I scored well above the 90th percentile, possibly even around the 95th percentile, but I can't say with certainty given how this information is presented. Additionally, I cleared the 70% mark on all 10 of the topics that CFA Level 1 tests you on. In this video, I'll first talk about what makes the CFA test so hard, then I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to pass the exam, I'll talk about the total number of hours I studied, how many hours per day I studied, and finally I'll go over the tools and resources that I used during this process, and I'll give you a walkthrough on how this all ties together and how you could implement this yourself. Links to these tools and resources will be down in the description, so check that out after you watch. The CFA Level 1 exam covers a vast amount of material. Nothing goes too far deep into the weeds, but the material sure stretches wide. The volume of the material that you have to consume, combined with the fact that your studying is self-directed, is what makes the exam difficult. So why do candidates get knocked off track? The first reason is that they don't have a schedule or a system. Or they might have a schedule or system, but they don't have an effective one. You need to be able to take notes and create flashcards quickly because there's going to be a high volume of them. And the scheduling of your study time needs to be precise. You have to pace yourself over this four to six month period and need to track when you study each lesson. But more importantly to your scheduling, you need to know when to review each lesson again and again until you've mastered it. The second thing that knocks candidates off track is wasting time having to relearn material because you're using ineffective study methods. Highlighting your notes and textbooks and rereading over and over are some of the more popular methods of study, but they're actually among the least effective. They are time consuming and they aren't conducive to storing the CFA material in your long-term memory, which is what you'll need on the exam. Now that you know about the difficulties of the exam, let me tell you how I passed. I started studying leisurely about six months out from my exam day. The first several weeks involved a lot of trial and error, trying to figure out what was the best way to tackle the large amount of material that I would have to know. After about a month, I landed on a routine that looked promising. I created an effective and efficient system for note-taking, flashcard creation, and optimized scheduling of study sessions. I call it the Lean CFA Study System because it's based on the idea of lean manufacturing or lean production, which is an approach where you work relentlessly to eliminate waste from a process. The waste in the CFA studying process is wasted time, wasted effort, and overall wasted resources. I created my own scheduling spreadsheet so I knew how to pace myself with learning each of the 153 lessons under the 57 readings. But even more importantly than knowing when to study each lesson for the first time, I created this spreadsheet so it would tell me when I had to review the lesson for the second time, the third time, the fourth time, and so forth until I mastered every single lesson. The backbone of the spreadsheet is spaced repetition, which has been researched, validated, and mentioned in numerous books and articles. Overall, this system trimmed the fat off of the CFA Level 1 studying process, and it freed up a massive amount of time for myself that I was able to use to work on practice problems, quiz myself, and take practice exams. My note-taking and flashcard creation was extremely fast, extremely organized, and it was always accessible. Using Notion for note-taking and Anki for flashcard creation is far superior in terms of time than handwriting your notes and flashcards. I'd estimate that this alone saved me 50 hours overall. Additionally, once my notes and my flashcards were created, my CFA revision spreadsheet kept me on track and eliminated all worry and ambiguity on what I had to study on any given day. Every lesson within every reading 
within every topic was reviewed at the optimal time, thanks to the formulas that are built into the spreadsheet. And by the way, you could access the spreadsheet through the resource links in the description. And finally, my system saved me time because it utilized effective study methods. This made each of my learning and study sessions more efficient and it helped prevent the amount of material that I forgot, thus reducing the amount of time that I wasted having to relearn material. I stuck to my schedule and did what it told me to do. When I would study a lesson, I would test myself with flashcards and I also practiced the practice questions that Kaplan offered. Kaplan's QBank has around 4,000 practice questions, I think, and I ended up completing 3,000 of them. And if there was a practice question that I really thought I ought to know, I would add that to my flashcard deck on Anki. In regards to mock exams, I ended up taking four total before my test. I took one per week during my last month of studying. When I showed up on exam day though, I did feel prepared. In terms of timing, I told you that I started studying about six months out from my exam day. For total hours studied, everyone's familiar with the recommended amount of 300 hours. I ended up studying about 400 hours. And I believe that I was able to study that high amount of hours because I broke down my study sessions into chunks throughout the day. For example, doing three one-hour study sessions is a lot easier to complete than one three-hour study session. Your willpower won't deplete as fast, as well as your focus and attention. Keep in mind that these 400 hours were 400 efficient hours as well. It isn't necessarily about the number of hours you put in, but it's more about the number of productive hours you put in. Let's talk about how many hours I studied per day. And it really changed over the six months. For the first few months, I probably studied one to two hours a day pretty nonchalantly. Once I was about three months out from my exam day, I began my deliberate practice and study, and I would go for probably two to three hours a day. Once I was one month out from the exam, I tried to study as much as my schedule could fit. Some days that was two hours, some days that was seven or eight hours. But on average, during that last month, I'd say that I studied four to five hours a day. Now that you have the story of how I passed, I'll share the tools and resources that I used in my system. Like most candidates out there, I had the CFA Institute material and platform that you get when you register, and I also utilize a third-party test prep provider. I used Kaplan's Essentials Package, which was the most minimal and cheapest package that they offered, and I really think that this is all that you need. I used Kaplan's online textbooks to take my notes and learn the topics, and I used their platform for practice problems and to create quizzes for myself. The Kaplan package offers four mock exams, and I ended up taking three of them. With the CFA Institute materials and platform, I hardly used them because Kaplan was the main thing that I lived in every day. I never read any of the CFA Institute's textbook material. I didn't really work on any of their practice problems except for the ethics section. I wanted to study ethics problems as much as I could, so I did use the CFA Institute's ethics practice questions. And finally, the CFA Institute offers one mock exam and I did take that exam. Notion is a lifesaver when it comes to note taking, organization, and accessibility. Wikipedia describes Notion as an application that provides components such as notes, databases, Kanban boards, wikis, calendars, and reminders. Notion is what I use to take notes and organize those notes. I didn't handwrite any of my notes. I know there are plenty of studies out there that show that you remember things better when you write them out by hand, but there's this trade-off between writing things down and being able to quickly take notes on the vast amount of material. The time you save by not handwriting your notes can be used later for effective study and memorization methods. The feature on Notion that I used for all of my note-taking was the toggle feature. With the toggle feature, I took notes using Active Recall, which is an effective studying method where you quiz yourself and you have to generate an answer. While reading, I'd basically think of a question that I could ask myself. Then, I'd create a toggle and supply the answer underneath. The answer would be a copy and paste from the online Kaplan textbook, or I would type the answer in my own words. And I frequently use the snipping tool on my computer for screenshots of graphics and formulas. This note-taking structure of toggle questions and answers sets you up nicely for when you have to create your flashcards on Anki. All the toggles will be copy and pasted into Anki and become your flashcards that you study. So let's talk about Anki now. Anki is a program online or on your desktop that allows you to create flashcards 
You aren't just limited to creating basic flashcards with words on the front and words on the back. Anki has a lot of options where you could customize your flashcards. You could add text, you could add fill in the blanks, you could format the text, you could add photos, and you could do a whole lot just to create comprehensive, helpful flashcards. Anki's features are great, but its capability to organize your flashcards is just as amazing. I had parent decks for each of the 10 topics. Within each topic, I had decks for all 57 readings. And within all 57 readings, I had 153 decks for each lesson. This separation and organization is essential for the system. You could study things at a high level, such as one of the 10 topics, or you could just study one single lesson and really focus on that and master it. The next tool I used was my favorite. This right here is the bread and butter of the entire system, and I guarantee that I wouldn't have passed the exam if I didn't have this. The biggest contributor to my success and my sanity was my CFA revision spreadsheet that I created. This spreadsheet would track which lessons I studied. Then I would give myself a grade from one to 10 on how well I knew everything in that lesson. Based on that one to 10 rating, the spreadsheet would automatically schedule the next time I had to review that lesson. If I rated myself a two, for example, the next time I would study that lesson would be two days later. If I rated it an eight, I would have to review that lesson 11 days after my initial time studying it. And this is spaced repetition. The topics that I was pretty proficient in were studied less frequently, and other topics that I struggled with were studied more frequently. This sheet is the backbone of the entire study system. It keeps everything optimized and on track. You'll never find yourself wasting time thinking about what you have to study. In the top left here, you enter a few inputs. At the start of your studies, you enter your test date. Then on any given day, you enter the current date. This here will tell you how many days you have left until your exam. Also, entering today's date triggers these formulas over here to tell you which topics you have to study on that day. Over here, for your first initial learning of each of the 153 lessons, you could enter here how many you want to learn each day. And I'd recommend learning one to two lessons each day. If you enter a one or a two, the sheet will tell you the date that you will finish learning each lesson for the first time. And you want to complete learning all of them for the first time, probably one month before your exam. Because at that point, you'll have seen every lesson once, you'll have time to review those lessons, and you'll have time to take practice exams. If you want this spreadsheet, you could download it. I know this video is just an overview of what I did, so I created a Skillshare course that goes more in depth for every single component of this system. It'll go deeper into how to use the CFA revision spreadsheet, Notion for note taking, and Anki for flashcards. I'll go over the background of the effective study methods that are used and what makes them so great. And finally, I'll share how you could increase your chances of success by utilizing certain productivity techniques and ways to keep your mind and body primed for cognitive performance. And there it is, everybody. That's how I passed the CFA level one exam. I'm excited to see uh, what the reaction is to the system. I'm hoping that candidates could use this to their benefit. Until then, I'll get working on the next video for you. See you then.